Hi, I'm Thomas Daria. I'm from The Wedding Veil and most recently from Harmony of the Heart coming out this weekend and you're watching Hallmark Happens. Are you like one shocked at the response like of everyone wanting to do these interviews with you because I mean obviously these are great back-to-back -back movies but like were you expecting this? Not at all. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you and I'm gonna be very um, very transparent. Um, the, the roles I'm essentially booking are relatively smaller. Like I'm like number 10 on the call sheet and everyone still wants to interview me. So it, it is a little bit kind of confusing, but I feel very humbled and very um, happy about the opportunities and very fortunate really uh, with the wedding veil. Yeah, I had a, originally I was reading for another part and that didn't materialize, but then they said, hey, we actually have another role for you, which actually fits you better. And I didn't quite understand at first because I obviously wanted the bigger role because I thought it was better and I could perform and, you know, and my agent actually had let me know, hey, listen, I think it's actually more beneficial for you. You know, take a look at this and it's you, you're, you're with the leads. So you're essentially with the top billing. You're basically trying to steal the girls, so to speak. And um, I, I listened to him and I said, you know what, you know, you clearly know what you're doing. And we went with it. And the response has been fantastic. And um, yeah, I was told it was like 4.2 million views, which is unreal. That's like. I think it's a record, but I was, I'm not sure if I was corrected during the Instagram live, but uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was lovely to see the reception for it, the, the fans, the, I've had so many DMs with people saying, Hey, you're the guy. <laughs> it was, it was really, it's just, it's just been, um, it's, it's been fantastic. I can't complain. Well, it's like, even though these aren't like the, like the major, like lead roles and they're still like critical parts to the story, it's better than like having maybe like your entire like scene cut out because, you know, you see, you hear that sometimes and you're like, you never see these things come to light. So at least your scenes did come to light. Three of them, I think. Yeah. Three of them. And I, one of them actually did get cut. Um, I was actually supposed to have another scene with this lovely actress that was supposed to play um, Kevin's, Peter's character's uh, cousin. It's, she's the pretty blonde girl with the red dress at the wedding. I'm not sure if you saw the movie, but um, yeah, I was asking her out. I was actually asking her to dinner. And then they just jumped right to the scene where <laughs> they were coming out of the car and they had mentioned it. And I'm like, oh, damn, they cut that scene out. I thought it would be really great. But it is what it is. You know how movies work sometimes with the uh, editing and the, you know. Yeah, well, so it's fun. Like, obviously, the back-to-back, -back, um, you know, it was not like back-to-back. -back. They aired it twice, but it was back-to-back -back now. All of a sudden, like, this weekend, it's back-to-back. -back. But um, I'm wondering, like, in your free time, do you find yourself watching Hallmark Channel or GAC Family? Are these the types of shows that you enjoy <laughs> having on? I do now. Honestly, I um, at first, I just felt like there were just so many Christmas movies. And, and now I find that they're actually, like, just like hidden gems that you kind of can watch back and over and over again. I actually know some of my aunts that actually watch Hallmark movies like every year during Christmas time and they watch the same three, four movies and it's just always in the background. It's actually kind of funny, but um, yeah, I, I think um, it, it's just a different world and um, it's got that really clean image about it. And, and sometimes you kind of need that with everything that's happening in the world. You kind of just want to, disappear and watch something for two hours and just kind of, you know, just like just take in that magic. So you, you genuinely need that at this time. And I find uh, it does a lot of good. With GAC, I've been watching more of their movies now. And with Hallmark now, I'm actually really immersed in it. And I feel like it's almost research, <laughs> so to speak. But yeah. Well, and you being like in Vancouver, that's their, their main like go-to place to make these movies. And you have like such, I mean, the reason I think you're getting partly of these interviews is you are like, Okay, you're, you're handsome. Let's just say it. everyone else thinks so. But I know, I mean, you have like the perfect look for like the leading role for like these made for TV movies. So I, I actually looked homeless two hours ago. So I, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I do. I feel fortunate and every opportunity I'm getting, I'm not taking for granted. And anytime you get to act, it's always a blessing because the process, um, well, I'm not sure if you know, but obviously I think you can tell with Instagram. I did start with modeling and I just felt that was a, a different game entirely where you're just kind of submitting photos and then you get selected and then you go do the job. It's, it, it actually was a lot more transparent. Whereas with acting, you're auditioning and then you're on hold and then you get a call back and then you go to network and then they decided to go with a different actor or they go with someone that looks nothing like you. And, or sometimes they just go with someone that has a bigger resume. So you have to wait kind of it's, it's it's a long moment where you have to actually kind of wait until you actually get to set to do something that you love 
Um, whereas with modeling, I just found, you know, knock on wood, it just came a lot easier for me. And I just felt that like, um, I could really run with it. Where, where with acting, you kind of have to like really um, kind of respect the hustle and the grind and you got to take the no's, you got to take the maybes and you got to take the callbacks. A lot of actors, I think, really forget that um, being on hold or getting a callback are like great signs. They're, 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 um, you're basically headed in the right direction, meaning that casting likes you, the producers like you, the directors like you, they might see that role in how you performed it. And then, you know, when it comes to, you know, the end result, it's, it's genuinely out of your hands. So there's a lot of things that I felt I could control with modeling. And now with acting, it's completely different. And it's a little bit more challenging where it's out of your hands. Like, I think my acting coach in Toronto, Mike Shore, oh, so shout out to Mike Shore. Um, he had let me know something and it kind of just stuck with me. He said, do your best and surrender the role. And I find that really does help sometimes where, you know, there are auditions where you really want and you, you feel like you really did good and it just didn't pan out um, for whatever reason. You just kind of have to kind of go with the flow. Everything's a learning. Everything, every, every audition you're doing, I find you're just learning and you're getting better or you take something away from it. Exactly. And it's like, uh, as far as like acting goes, I agree. It's more of like, you can get so like caught up in it and like, why, why didn't you pick me? And it's like, it's kind of, it's a really emotional experience, but I guess compared to like modeling, it is more emotional anyway, because you're like in these scenes and everything, but it's nice. You can do both. Cause if you're like, if things aren't clicking on one end, you can just go do that in the meantime. It's, it's that, that I actually feel very fortunate about where I can just kind of jump and go back and forth where it's, it's kind of good, but you kind of have to like pay a little bit more attention to what you're watering, so to speak. You, you, I find that when I was doing modeling, I just really solely focused on modeling, but then now that I'm tr transitioning into acting, I just find I have to really do the work and really work with the lines and the emotions and really, really just give a very authentic performance. Because if you don't, it's, it's really come, it's gonna come on camera. You're gonna actually see, oh, okay, it's a very watered down performance and that's not what you want because anyone can do that. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's definitely more work. And I really, really respect the actors that really do the work. I actually met um, a brilliant actor, Herschel, uh, on set and he's with the characters. He's actually with my agent and we just spoke a lot about acting back and forth and it, um, it really inspired me. He's doing very well and uh, it really like it invigorated me and I felt like, okay, if he's doing it, I can do it. And sometimes you, you um, as an actor, you get very doubtful when you don't book something for a substantial amount of time, whether it's six months or whether it's a year. I know some actors that are working consistently, then they're very blessed. Whereas some actors, they just don't work for a little while and they get to this weird stage and then they finally book something that they finally can take a deep breath. Like, okay, I'm doing something right. Yes, it's like a, a waiting process. You just like wait for the next thing. And then you have these two things that are just like back to back, like you already said, which is exciting. It's like uh, extra press for you. So I guess I'm trying to think of like, I was going to ask you something. Okay, so you were talking about you were inspired by this man named Herschel. Do you have any other maybe actors that really inspire you that you would like love to emulate their careers? A hundred percent. Even Jessica. Jessica, I, I had met her at a party actually before even getting to work with her and, and all that. And um, yeah, she's someone that really inspires me because she's really, really, she's really doing it right. And her writing this movie and really just um, showing what she can do in terms of singing and everything, the whole gamut. Um, yeah, she's definitely someone I, I really would love to emulate in a sense where she's taken her career to the next level. And um, she, I think she's probably going to dabble in producing and, and all that. And um, she's, I feel like at the top of her game now and she's hitting her stride where people are really going to start recognizing her for, you know, as, as one of the greats in terms of hallmarks and, and everything really. And she's such a wonderful, sweet person. So that makes you like her even more. Um, in terms of someone that inspires me, yeah, I have a few actors that I've always loved and I still love. Uh, Colin Farrell is one of them. Ryan Reynolds is another Canadian from Vancouver, actually. Um, and then you obviously have your regulars, uh, Brad Pitt and stuff. But most recently I found an actor who I find is, super talented and I think he's he's on his way it's Mahershala Ali and um he's brilliant in everything that he does most recently I saw a uh, swan song which is about like cloning humans and, and it was just lovely his performance was incredible and um yeah he's another actor where I'm like 
man, I wish I could be that good in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. I forget the thing he, I think he won the Oscar for a couple years ago. Oh, I can't. And yes, that's it. Twilight, sorry. Um, Moonlight. <laughs> I was going to say Twilight. <laughs> Twilight. <laughs> I don't think it was Twilight, but maybe he had a role in it. <laughs> Twilight. Yeah, Moonlight, the whole uh, La La Land Moonlight debacle at the Oscars Best yes. Picture. I'm aware of that. <laughs> yeah, how could you forget? Okay, so I guess we'll talk a bit more about the movies. So I guess being Hallmark and there's so much hype around these movies and people just love them. We're like, talk about, I guess, on set working with like the biggest of the biggest Hallmark actors. You've got Lacey and then you've got Kevin. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, and honestly, I can, I think the warmth I felt right away on day one, and I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit nervous. Um, I think they needed me, like, not in the beginning of the day, I think they needed me, like, uh, midway through the day. So I was in my trailer going over my lines and hard times, and, like, yeah, I just felt like, okay, I'm getting a little bit nervous because it's just anxious energy. And then you finally get to set, and it's so easy and breezy, and everyone's nice, and you're hitting your, everything's, the flow's there. But um, yes, when I got to meet them, Lacey was just a dream to work with. She's the sweetest actress and so giving and so kind and uh, very patient. And, you know, I had a bit, I had a few questions for her, obviously. And um, yeah, she answered all of them, you know, gracefully and took the time to um, let me know what it takes to be a number one and to be, you know, um, in charge of this whole crew and to kind of like really set the tone. And um I think being in her presence, you kind of feel that. And Kevin was, um, <laughs> I think with him, he's such a cool guy and uh, very down to earth, very, uh, very charming, very personable. Um, and he's someone definitely I would love to, uh, of course, emulate. Um, yeah, and, and he's just very, um, he had this kind of grounded confidence about him that, uh, that you felt uh, like you had the right scene partner, so to speak. And, um, yeah, Kevin is definitely someone I would love to emulate because he's got, you know, shows on the go and he's jumping from film to film. Like he's really, he's in, he's in demand right now. And, um, and Jessica is just a force on her own. And Lacey's just on a different level where she's just, you know, like just producing everything and creating what she wants. And uh, yeah, she's like a Wonder Woman. If there's yeah. Any, like it's all the people I've, uh, I've worked with. Yeah. I feel like I'm taking little bits of pieces of everyone and just kind of making a better putting them together and just making a better me. Well, especially like with Lacey, she's has like so much experience. She's doing this since she was like a kid. So I, I did ask Kevin this. I talked to him and I was like, were you a fan of Mean Girls? And he's like, of course, like, were you a fan of Mean Girls? <laughs> you know what? I, I did watch it. I'm not going to lie. I, I watched it. Of course I watched it um, when I was younger and I didn't want to say anything. And I'm glad I didn't because I'm, I'm guessing she hears that a thousand times. A day and I think it's kind of like uh, yeah of course you're 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 part of this movie that's just gigantic hit globally and you're obviously gonna hear that and you know and um I, I wanted to say something like that's so fetch but I'm like nah I'm just gonna keep it real classy and just keep it you know but um yeah she was honestly I, I don't have yeah she was lovely in every aspect even during our scene like she was so like we were doing the rehearsals before we shot it because there were a few extra lines that I think they kind of like took out because it was just adding um wasn't adding to the scene but um yeah she was she was lovely to work with I, w I, I wish I could work with her again I can honestly say that if I get to work with her again I would be very happy to work with her. well you never know maybe you'll get cast as the leading man in another Hallmark movie and then she will play like your love interest or something <laughs> kind of surreal but I think it's kind of expected I, I mean that's what I'm hoping for you kind of yeah. have smaller roles before you get the leads and I feel like I'm slowly climbing and I think um yeah I, I could definitely see that as a future maybe in the next year or so yeah well these interviews that you're doing all with all of these interviews that have to be adding to your momentum and the hype and I know people they take notice of this kind of stuff so congratulations thank you no I, I really really genuinely appreciate it and thank you for um shooting me a message and wanting to wanting to interview me <laughs> um yeah it, it's it's been pretty uh it's definitely humbling and uh, i feel very fortunate about the experiences and in terms of people wanting to hear your story people wanting to know how you started and um what it takes to be an actor and all the little things all the little things that you don't necessarily get to to see uh, or even hear about so it's 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 refreshing to hear um and all these interviews have been different 
one has one was very corporate like and the other one was very like fun loving and yours is kind of in between but you seem super down to earth so i feel like i can really talk to you and have a real authentic conversation you know what i mean so um yeah i, I think I, I do feel very uh very fortunate a lot of my friends are like this is kind of crazy bro you're like number 10 on the call sheet and everyone wants to interview you and i'm like i know it's um it does feel good. It means I'm clearly doing something right in terms of, um, you know, marketing myself in a way where I could be a potential leading man in the coming years. And uh, Hallmark's taken a liking to me. The GAC family's taken a liking to me. They both follow me on Instagram and DM me a couple of times. So it's been, um, it's been great. I think, uh, you know, knock on wood, you know, I feel like the future is going to be uh, pretty bright with my relationship with both of those guys. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, I'm sure it will be. There are always, I mean, how many movies do these networks come out with? Like a hundred? So there's got to be something for you, like a big time role. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, I think any any role you can get your hands on, again, is, is always a blessing. And I think, yeah, Hallmark does pump out about like 20 to even maybe 40 movies here every year. So if you can find opportunities, you know, in every little film that could just pump you up. And yeah, it's always, a, yeah, I, again, I always look at that as a, a strange kind of thing where you have to go through so many, you know, you got to jump through so many hoops to get to set and finally do what you love where in other lines of work, that's not the case. You're just hired and then you just do something. Um, so yeah, kind of like going back to what we were talking about with modeling, it's not the same. It really isn't. And I find um, with acting, you have to really do the work and really um, show them that you're essentially the best candidate. And um it could be something simple like, hey, they wanted a blonde lead instead of a brunette. And you could have done everything right, but it's, it's out of your hands. So. It is. You just never know. But that's kind of the fun of it. Just like waiting and seeing and like just wondering when, what you will be picked for because you have no idea. So that's the fun of it. I think I'm right. I could be wrong. I think there were like just 40 Christmas movies alone last year, just for the Christmas season. 40. That's, yeah. And that's just, that's not GAC family included. So I'm just saying that's just Hallmark. So there's a lot of opportunities in Vancouver. Yeah, I feel, I feel definitely fortunate to be in the right city. And um, I'm definitely, I find with the best agency here, I love my agent. Hyman is amazing. He's represented uh, all of the power players in Vancouver and all the actors that I feel are doing very well. Um, so I feel like I'm in the right family under the right umbrella. Okay, so this is like, I was going to ask you this. Can you talk about your journey from Toronto to Vancouver? And do you think you will make the move to sunny Los Angeles? You know, if, if you look at the map, it's kind of strange. And yeah, it, it actually looks like I'm headed there. Um, I think, I feel like I need to build up my resume quite a bit and beef it up a little bit and gain some sort of notoriety before I actually can go to LA. Um, or it could be something where it's just, you get an audition, you book it, and you have to fly to LA. It, it could be one of those things too. Um, I feel like I'm in the right place because LA is like four hours from Vancouver um, and like Seattle is like two hours, which is kind of crazy. Um, so I feel like you're in the right area with Vancouver. Whereas Toronto, it felt, um, it felt, there's a lot filming there um, and there's a lot of opportunities, but I just felt it was, it was very different. And maybe I think what it was is because I was, doing well with modeling there they kind of typecast me to that and they can't like shift how on how they view you so my friend randy thomas he's another brilliant actor from toronto he had mentioned that and he said yeah i think they kind of like have seen you a certain way and they can't get that image out of their mind and they just kind of peg you as just a model and um, i needed to kind of go to a different city like vancouver to kind of transition into acting fully and really immerse myself and really show them what i'm capable of whereas Toronto kind of maybe but, but I had lovely times in Toronto too I did book some great roles in Toronto as well and um yeah the transition from Toronto to Vancouver was uh it was uh it was definitely interesting to say the least because I drove here it was uh it was a journey it was yeah it was a journey it was uh, uh my roommate Corey and I drove here he's also a brilliant actor from Vancouver Corey Wadden look him up um yeah it was uh, the drive alone was was kind of crazy but I think what made the drive and making the decision finite was there was a lot of actors in Vancouver had, that had sent me a message and a DM and they're like, Hey man, I, I see what you're doing in Toronto. You know, keep doing what you're doing. I think you should try Vancouver out. I'm like Vancouver. I mean, obviously I didn't know I didn't do my research clearly, but um, yeah. And once I did, I realized, wow, there's, this is the real deal in terms of the film industry actually really booming 
Um, Toronto was good, but I just feel like Vancouver is great. There's so many opportunities here. There's a lot of American productions, so you can really feel like you can make a name for yourself. And a lot of the actors that I knew in Toronto that had moved to Vancouver and made that, you know, took that leap of faith, it really panned out well for them because they were um, booking quite consistently and they were booking good work that really kind of really um, pushed their resume to the next level where they're now in, you know, talks to kind of go to L.A. So I think that's what it also takes as an actor. It, it's, it's that resume building stage where a lot of actors find that they're in. A lot of actors, I think 80% of actors, um, find that they're in this resume kind of building um, scenario until they kind of get the opportunity to go to LA. So I feel like Vancouver is such a unique place because you have so many locals there that aren't even having to be in Los Angeles to get like lead roles on movies such as Hallmark or GAC Family. I mean, that's kind of unheard of. So you're in the right place for these opportunities. And, you know, you would be perfect for like a CW project because I think you still look like young enough, especially like I look at your Instagram, like when you don't have like the, the shaven, non-shaven face going on. You look super young. I do, I do. I think I um, go for like 23, 24 when I sh clean shave. And then when I have the beard, this is actually for an audition that I have to shoot uh, two self takes for. I, they want me to be a little bit older. I'm 31. So I think if you can kind of um, shave, you can, if, if you're clean with it, you can actually look quite a bit younger than you actually are, which I think is a good thing in the industry where, you can go for someone that's like 24, but then you can also go for someone that's like 35. So there's that, you know, you gotta, you, you gotta basically put the whole hair and outfit and all that stuff into play. So. Do you ever have people like asking you how old you are? Like, have you ever, hey, yeah. It's weird because I feel like I'm in this weird kind of stage in life where I, I, I look a lot younger than I am. And then when I, I let them know, yeah, I'm like 30, 31. And they're like, oh, wow, I didn't, I thought you were like 24 especially when I clean shave. Um, <laughs> and then I'm like, no, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but yeah, I'm, I'm 30, 31. So it's, it's a little bit strange, but um, yeah, it also happens when you kind of see someone on camera. When you see someone on camera, they sometimes really are, look super young or they look definitely a lot more mature than they are. So yeah, that also plays into it as well, especially for self takes. Absolutely. And I would say you said the bearer of bad news. I wouldn't call that bad news. If people think you look younger than you are, just embrace that while it lasts. <laughs> well, um, we're going to finish up with a quick rapid fire question session. So first off, what is the last show you binge watched? Ozark. Oh, that's intense. Julia Garner's like number two on IMDb. It's Jason Bateman's a legend. And uh, yeah, Ozark. <laughs> Sorry. Slightly different than a, oh, you can go like in depth in these responses. They're rapid fire, but they tend to be quite slow, slow burn questions. <laughs> sure. I mean, like the last thing I watched like fully from beginning to end was obviously the Wedding Veil trilogy. Um, and I, I, I do find myself watching more Hallmark and, and now more GAC because it's something I'm going to be auditioning for. And I think something I'm going to be a part of. So I find if it were to be a genuine rapid fire question, I think, yeah, it'd probably be Hallmark's and things that I'm actually going to be immersed in where I'm like auditioning and I'm like, yeah, I definitely need to kind of find that rhythm. But in terms of my downtime where I am bored, yeah, of course, you can't go wrong with Netflix. Okay. Yeah. So you're studying for like the tone of these movies because they have a specific tone. So it's a great lesson by watching these and there's an abundance. So you'll, okay. I'm trying to think of one that you should watch. Um, well, Jesse Metcalf is in a country wedding. That's a really fun one with Autumn Reeser. Oh my gosh. The another Wedding Veil connection and Harmony from the Heart connection. Um, what else? It was always you. I'm sure. Have you been recommended? It was always you. Yes, that's fantastic. What else? Um, you know what? I'll send you some messages when I think of like the really good ones. And oh, and yeah. Lacey Schmier is in. Sorry, uh, Moonlight in Vermont. That one's fantastic. Um, I think I can watch anything with Lacey and Jessica. In it. I re I really can. I think because now that I've actually worked with them, I, I understand who they are and their personalities, and and now I can see them on camera and be like, wow, okay, that's it's just it's uh, you have that connection, right? So it's a little bit different. So yeah, I definitely find, I, I will, I'll definitely kind of look at their IMDb and be like, okay, I got to watch that. I got to watch that. I got to watch that. So I feel like I'm a little behind, but yeah. Oh, there's, there's so many. And another one with Jessica, it's, um, what was it called? Something with Jen Lilly. I think it was called Yes, I Do. And, and Jessica's like the villain in it and she's fantastic. She's just amazing. So you've got to watch that one. Actually, she actually shot something with uh, friend Christopher Russell. Oh, oh wow. Um, Something with kites, I think. Hmm. Oh, I didn't see that one, but I, I did hear of it. 
Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that was that was that was lovely. I'm, I'm sorry for butchering it, but I'm pretty sure it had to do with kites and them flying. And yeah, they were they were they were great. Okay, that's another one. Then we will both have to watch that one. Um, what is the next question on rapid fire? Oh, <laughs> favorite ice cream flavor. Favorite ice cream flavor. You know what? Um, uh, sometimes obviously you can't go wrong with chocolate. Um, but lately I've been finding like like cheesecake flavor ice cream and, and Oreo actually, actually, you know, I'm a big ice cream guy. So you asked the wrong person. So I feel like I have like four really like um, pistachios good. Yeah, I'd say pistachio, Oreo and like cheesecake. But not all together in the same, that would be interesting. At the same time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <"No."> <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I, I live on pizza, ice cream and coffee. That's like, that can't amazing. go wrong. Join the club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how do you stay young eating like that? I don't know. But like I said, enjoy it while it lasts. Um, because that's not a healthy diet. <laughs> but it, Empire, that's <laughs> <laughs> I guess you get like healthy ice cream and like have coconut milk coffee and like gluten-free pizza and then it's healthy. <laughs> the last one, is there a place that you would like to visit but you have not had the chance to travel to? Italy. That's oh. definitely on, it's, it's on my vision board. That's one place I would I feel like um yeah, I definitely need to visit Italy. I think that would be a place that would get married. That would be a place I would visit with family. That would be a place I'd visit with friends. All, everything. I feel like that place has so much uh, culture and like, such a rich history. And everyone just loves going and just celebrating with their wines and their food. And I'm, I mean, again, I could talk for days, but yes, I would definitely say Italy. Okay, there, uh, I saw something. It just showed up like on Instagram, like the suggested, you know, videos. And there was this place in Italy I, it's like they built this like monastery like on the side of this huge mountain I, like seven eight hundred years ago I don't know how they did it it's just incredible I think I, what you're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's just intricate details all over is that what you're yeah talking? it's just like just like yeah just on the edge like I don't I can't imagine how they did that so yeah. long ago it's just especially like you're seeing the history there Italy's just amazing and then Amalfi the coast of Amalfi it's just amazing I've never been <laughs> I also don't know how the pyramids were created and moved. So yeah. I know. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? I tell you. And then now like construction, everyone's like, it's so cheap these days. I'm like, but then how do they do that back then? It's because they took their time and they were patient. Like you have to be as an actor. So it all comes full circle in this conversation. I think this pandemic really woke a lot of people up, especially when it comes to doing what they love and spending time with the people they love. And it just was kind of like a, a reawakening for a lot of people. A lot of people quit mm -hmm. Kind of you know you know sold their homes moved or whatever and just now are focused on what makes them happy and uh, if they're internally happy then they feel like they're in the right place in life and a lot of mm -hmm. people are i think it's just um yeah i think this was a blessing when you think about it um, even though it's obviously a lot of terrible things happening but you just got to look at the positives in the situation i feel like that's probably the biggest one where a lot of people are waking up and they're seeing that um, you know, I think this is a, this is a lesson. I think this is a blessing that you can actually, if you genuinely pay attention to all of the lessons that we learned through this pandemic, you can take a lot away. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And life's short. So you just do what you want to do and just go after it, no matter what that is. It doesn't have to be anything entertainment related. There's so much other stuff out there that people want to do. And then like they, now they finally are like, I'm just going to give it a shot. So that's great. And then uh, like you taking the leap, moving to Vancouver and driving all that way. That's bonkers. Yeah, yeah for sure. Well, and it's paying off. I talked about the movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, honestly, it was, uh, yeah, you have to take that leap. I think it, at this point in your life where with the, world, with the state of the world, I feel like you just got to go for what you want, no matter what it is. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's a great way to finish off this interview. So everybody make sure to rewatch Harmony from the Heart and the Wedding Veil when they rear, I'm sure they will rear often and frequently. So you want to catch Thomas in those. Well, all good things to you in 2022. You too. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Of course. Congratulations. Bye.